This is my favorite piece of shit, little failure. The PlayStation Vita is something that I wanted since the very since the very start. When it first launched in February of 2012, I always really wanted this thing. The launch of this system was incredible. Like it launched with an Uncharted game. I mean, that's pretty much like a Nintendo system launching with Mario or Zelda. And, you know, Nintendo systems usually launch with either Mario or Zelda. But, you know, it's just like not only did we get Uncharted, but we got Hot Shots Golf, Wipeout, Little Deviants, Mon Nation Racers. And then on the third party side of things, we got Ultimate Bomber vs. Capcom 3, uh, Rayman Origins, Touch My Katamari, Michael Jackson, The Experience. This handheld was looking to be incredible. And the quality of graphics on this thing were like unheard of at the time. This genuinely looked like a PS3 in the palm of your hands. And then overall, just the design feels so premium. Still, even to this day, 10 years later, this feels like one of the nicest things I own. Which I guess kind of makes it like a little iffy as a true handheld, just how nice it feels. You know, I, I don't want to throw this into my pocket and just bring it on a road trip. You know, what if it gets scuffed up? It, it's too nice for that. But as great as the launch lineup was, I don't think the Vita ever really had like that must have title. Sure, Uncharted was really damn cool to see on the Vita, but that's all it really was. I recently played through Uncharted Golden Abyss. Like I, I played through and beat it this year. I know like, why? I've been finally getting into the Vita this year. Uh, you know, I have the first edition model here and the second edition model, uh, and I've been buying and buying and buying a bunch of uh, the uh, the major Vita releases that happened. And uh, yeah, I decided, you know what? I really like the Uncharted games. I'm gonna try Uncharted Golden Abyss. I've never played it. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it feels like Uncharted. And as impressive as it really was, like, that's all I really was. It, it was just kind of like, it, it felt like a tech demo in the form of a, of a solid, game that you don't really regret buying it's really weird like you know there's enough meat on the game and you know the voice acting's great the presentation is great the gameplay's good all of that um but overall like it, it just felt like kind of a nothing experience uncharted golden abyss was kind of designed as an uncharted game that you know was on par with the ps3 games but was one you could pretty much ultimately completely skip because like it's it's a prequel but like nothing happens in it that's like leads to uh uncharted one two and three you know so uh yeah it just kind of felt like a, a game that you kind of bought just to say like hey i'm playing uncharted on the go and even then uncharted's not really a game i i really feel like you know like i never played uncharted one two and three or four and was like ah oh, damn like if only I could play this on, on the bus. Uncharted always felt like more of a game that uh, you wanted to play on the go just to say, hey, look how cool it is, I'm playing this on the go. And I think that was kind of the problem with a lot of the big AAA Vita titles. And that's why uh, Vita found most of its success later down the line with indie releases and JRPGs and all of that. As cool as it is, it still is really cool to play games like Uncharted Golden Abyss and Killzone Mercenary on this thing. At the end of the day, those games at their core just aren't anything to write home about. They're fine. But Killzone Mercenary is one that I actually played through. I, I beat that game too. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, like, it, it was cool, like, as in, like, you know, hey, this was a pretty well fleshed out FPS experience on the PlayStation Vita. Probably the best FPS on the Vita. Um, and it was just okay. Like, I, I feel like most people that recommended that game uh, just kind of played like the first level and was like, oh wow, look how impressive this is. This is the Vita's number one first person shooter. This is a great reason to pick up a Vita and this is a better reason to play a first person shooter on the Vita. But it's just like, like, what about the game? Nobody ever said anything about the game itself. They were just kind of saying how impressive it was. And yeah, the game is fine. There's nothing that wrong with it, but it's just like, there's just nothing to it. It's not really a game that you're like, oh, damn, you gotta play that. You gotta play that. It's a game that makes you feel better about owning a Vita, and, that, and that's about it. And yeah, once you start to play a lot of those games, you know, and, and kind of look back at that generation, uh, yeah, it's pretty obvious to see why uh, the Vita struggled so much. Also, around the time in 2012, 2013, I feel like that was kind of the era where it was not cool to have things. That was when everybody started to get iPhones and Android phones, smartphones in general. Everybody owned those things. And I think when people start to uh, adopt 
uh, those types of products more and more. They kind of looked at things like handheld game systems and cameras and music players, all that kind of stuff. Things that the iPhone kind of replaced and said, we don't need that. But nowadays, you know, you're kind of starting to see a lot of those things come back. The Nintendo Switch revitalized dedicated handheld gaming. Polaroid cameras are big. Like literally the cameras that print off your photo. Like those were considered outdated beyond belief, but now people are starting to realize like, Damn, it's kind of nice to have dedicated devices rather than depend on my phone for everything. Dedicated devices can be more fun and they can actually enhance your experience doing those kind of things. Yeah, sure, your phone can do pretty much everything, but hey, you know what? It's kind of nice to have a device that is solely for playing video games or solely for taking pictures or solely for mi playing music. And I do feel like if the Vita came out around this time, it would do much better. I don't really know if it would like do like crazy numbers, but I think it would do better. I think people are more uh, willing to just buy more more fun things like this, even if they're like, eh, my phone can play games. So it's unfortunate that the Vita just did not do well and kind of scared Sony off from ever doing uh, handheld gaming, at least for the foreseeable future ever again. But looking back, the Vita holds up tremendously well. I love this thing. I, I think overall the 3DS was a better system, but overall the Vita has so much going for it and it's so fun to play. The screen is gorgeous. The controls feel great. It has a lot of just unique, weird things like the back touchscreen. This isn't great. Like, I mean, like, I don't, you know, I, you know, like most times it's used, I'm like, ah, really? But still, I mean, like what other device has a back touchscreen? But one of the big problems with it was that you couldn't play it on the TV. The PSP actually had uh, AV out cables. Like you could plug your PSP into a TV with the correct cables. And uh, that way, you know, you could play your game on the TV. And in the year 2012, 2013, 2014, when the Vita was uh, kind of relevant to barely relevant, but still a little relevant. That was when social media, video platform sites like YouTube and, you know, live streaming, all of that was just taking off and blowing up. I think it was kind of bad that your video game device didn't have a method of broadcasting it to like video sites and whatnot. Like if you wanted to make a PlayStation Vita game review or you wanted to play through it, most people would just pointed their camera directly to the screen. And the 3DS had the exact same issue. You had to mod your 3DS. You still do have to mod your 3DS or you have to emulate it to, you know, uh, capture direct footage. So yeah, this isn't just a problem that the PS Vita had. This is a problem across pretty much most handhelds. Uh, but hey, you know, Sony did it before with the PSP. So I think it was just a lot more questionable how the Vita just didn't allow for that kind of thing. Thankfully, you can mod your PlayStation Vita and uh, then you can kind of do a couple of tricks to hook it up to your PC and record through like OBS or something. That's what I do. And uh, yeah, it works pretty well. It's a little quirky, but it gets the job done. However, there was an official means to play your PlayStation Vita on the TV, and this was kind of Sony's last ditch effort to save the Vita. And it's fucking lame. Uh, this thing just kind of pisses me off. PS Vita TV, or as we know it here in North America, the PlayStation TV. This thing is like one of the biggest pieces of false advertising I've ever seen in my life. And not only is it a big fat piece of false advertising, it's an incredibly large missed opportunity. So in 2013, Sony announced the PS Vita TV in Japan, a small little box that is fundamentally a PlayStation Vita without any of the extra stuff. Just basically a PS Vita without a camera, screen, touch screen, touch pad, any of that. Then a year later, it came over to North America as the PlayStation TV, uh, a slightly more confusing name. Yeah, that pretty much shows that they gave up on the Vita at this point, gave up on the Vita branding and just basically said, yep, this is PlayStation TV, just praying that uh, this would work. PS Vita TV uh, makes a lot more sense as to what it is. And hey, what is it? Well, uh, the name and the design of this system overall kind of suggests that this is a uh, micro console kind of deal, uh, something to stream things on, something to just watch movies on, play some smaller games on, all that stuff. That's pretty much what the Apple TV and Roku and Fire TV stick, all those things are. Uh, and that's what the PlayStation TV seemed to be. 
Look at how small this thing is. And they cram a lot of I.O. for how tiny this device is. You know, power, uh, that's Ethernet, HDMI, USB. That's for uh, memory cards, PlayStation Vita memory cards. And then this is where you put the PS Vita games. Uh, so yeah, fundamentally, this has every right to rock ass. If done correctly, this thing could have been incredible. It's literally like, hey, you can play all your Vita games. And the Vita had so many PSP games available on the storefront, PS1 games available on the storefront, all of that. And this was when Sony was pushing PlayStation Now. So a big feature of this was that you could have this on a different TV in your house and stream your PlayStation 4 remotely. So then you didn't have to, you know, grab your PS4 from Run TV, unplug it, lug it over to another TV, plug it in. Nah, you could just stream it to another TV, which, you know, hey, that's pretty convenient. And in addition to that, with like PlayStation Now, you could stream PS3 games to this thing. It just kind of felt like a really awesome little one-stop shop as, you know, a budget game console. They fucked it up, they fucked it up. Ugh, okay. Uh, so this thing is like one of the most annoying things to use just based on how incompatible it is with damn near everything. This felt so compromised by budgetary design decisions. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this bundle in Japan, which is a nice white, uh, comes with a DualShock 3, the PlayStation 3 controller. So that raises some questions. So if this is truly a PlayStation Vita without something like the touchscreen, back touchscreen, all that stuff, um, why is a DualShock 3 included? You do realize like a DualShock 4, the PS4 controller, has a touchpad on it, which makes it like perfect. So if you just included like a DualShock 4 with this thing, then, you know, like, hey, a lot of those compatibility issues don't exist as much. And there's always gonna be some compatibility issues, you know, there are PS Vita games that use the camera and, and whatnot. So it's just like, yeah, well, what do you do about that? I don't know, I think you just not, don't use the camera in those games, whatever. But no, they included a DualShock 3 mainly because like it, it was cheaper. It, it, there wasn't as much stuff in there. They probably had more laying around that weren't selling. So they were just like, yeah, we'll just include a DualShock 3 with the Vita TV. And so Sony didn't really want to go in and do a lot of work to games or do a lot of work to the system to make it so then a lot of those Vita games would be compatible. There are so many Vita games that for some reason just don't work. Tetris Ultimate doesn't work. Why? It's f***ing Tetris. There's nothing more to it. You'd use the buttons. I'd, I don't even know. It's not even down to like, oh, well, this game uses the touchscreen. This game uses something else that the Vita TV and DualShock 3 don't have. No, it's not even down to that. There are numerous games that have touchscreen support uh, that, that use it extensively that work fine with the Vita TV. Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate uses the touchscreen and that, that works because you have to go in and clunkily use like this weird menu setup to utilize the touchscreen. It's incredibly clunky, it works, but it's incredibly clunky. Which just makes me ask like, why the hell does that game work, but a game like fucking Tetris Ultimate doesn't work? There's actually a lot of Vita games. You can kind of tell like, damn, this was a bit of a, a dumb design decision on a lot of Vita games parts. Uh, where like for some reason they just they, they require the touchscreen for like a lot of stuff Super monkey ball banana splits like requires the touchscreen for the menus There's nothing else you can do. You can't use the thumbsticks for no reason there, There's absolutely no reason why it should use the, should require the touchscreen It just does and because of that like that game is just not compatible with the PlayStation Vita TV That's okay because that game is absolutely abhorrent, but still PlayStation all-stars battle royale that doesn't work There's no reason why that shouldn't work the Metal Gear Solid HD collection. No Sly Cooper collection Nuh-uh. Mortal Kombat, Gravity Rush, Hot Shots, Golf, Assassin's Creed 3, Liberation, Call of Duty, Black Ops, Declassified. Thank God that doesn't work, but still. Uh, pretty much like all of like the major AAA big games that, that a lot of people, including myself, like kind of associate with the Vita, Uncharted Golden Abyss, you know, th th those games, they don't work on this. You plug them in, they install, like they load the, the, the game up, but then when you click on it, uh, and it just says like, this game isn't compatible with the PlayStation TV. I think it's mainly down to like the developer or the publisher kind of going in and making, you know, kind of like saying like, yeah, we'll support the PlayStation TV. But other than that, like, like, there's like, why? Some of these games, I'm just like, why? Why don't, why don't they work on here? I, I'm telling you, like literally, like I'd say 
60 to 70 percent of my vita games and i own most of like the the main vita games most people know about uh is in like you know the well-known games uh they, they don't work they don't work on here so then what is this thing good for well uh for the few vita titles it does play i mean like it, it plays them fine they don't look as crisp as i'd want them to look uh there's a bit of like a, a very slight filter on them that kind of kind of blurs them a bit uh, nothing too crazy. It's not too blurry. It's not like, oh my god, horrible, but uh, it, it is there. The games aren't nearly as crisp as I'd want them to be. But you can download like some PSP games onto it through the PlayStation Store. Same with like PlayStation 1 games uh, and like, you know, a couple of the good Vita games. I think Sony was mainly positioning this as like a $100 little, little fun gaming device for the kids. Uh, a core bundle I remember here in North America was the Lego Movie Video Game Bundle, where you get this, a DualShock 3, and uh, like a download code, or, or maybe a game cartridge, I think it was a download code, for uh, the Lego Movie Video Game. But it's like, I don't know, man, for $100, you can get so much more for around that price, or just by saving just a little bit more. Because usability-wise, this thing is just like, I, I couldn't imagine this being like, Oh man, buy a cheap video game console for the kids or or for people who are, who are more casual. Like think of it from this perspective, okay? So it's just like let's say it's like all right, you know, uh, positioning this for the kids. A hundred dollars or so gets you this and Lego Movie Video Game DualShock Three. Bam! I don't have to spend two hundred, three hundred, four hundred bucks on on a better system, on a more advanced system. Uh, I can just get this. It's tiny, super super tiny and uh, they can still play, you know, the games they want to play. Okay, yeah, uh, most of the games that say, like, oh, PlayStation Vita on them, uh, they don't work on this. The user interface is designed for a touchscreen, and that's on your TV, so it's just like, what the hell am I looking at here? PlayStation TV kind of implies, like, oh, it's a streaming box, too. I can, I can play Netflix and Hulu and videos on it. Like, no. Yeah, most streaming video apps were not compatible uh, with this thing. You could download them, onto it from the PlayStation Store, but then when you try to open them, uh, yeah, it says, yep, that is not compatible with the PlayStation TV. Uh, so that kind of stinks. The way this is designed, like, I can't be the only one. I can't be the only one that looks at this and, be, and is like, oh, yeah, it's, it would be like an Apple TV type thing where, you know, you can play some play some cheap little games and, and stream some video. Like, no, so this is just pretty much like a really small game console and it even fails tremendously at that so pretty much all this is at the end of the day is a way to play like some psp games and ps1 games and select vita titles on your tv and at that point like in 2014 man i would have just bought a ps3 that wasn't too much more expensive i think around 2014 you could easily get one for under 200 bucks maybe 150 at that point and you have all those ps1 games available in that storefront you have all these ps3 games on there which a couple vita games were pretty much just like downgraded ps3 games anyway so it's just like well there you go everything actually just works with this controller because this controller was made for the ps3 because like nothing about this feels like an integrated experience like an experience that like oh man this feels right no nothing about it feels right it just feels like you're kind of it feels like an official hack of the playstation vita it just feels like sony didn't really put the necessary effort in to make this like a legitimately good device and this had so much going for it the concept of it was great just having like a stripped down playstation vita that's cheaper that plugs into a tv and you just have access to the vita's library because the vita had an insane library the vita titles itself may have been a little limited but you had all these psp games that sony made available on the vita's PlayStation Store, you had all these PS1 classics, all these downloadable digital only titles. And then on top of that, on the Vita itself, you did have Netflix, you did have YouTube, all this stuff. You could buy movies and, and you could still buy movies from the PlayStation Store on here, but nobody bought movies on the PlayStation Store. That's why they took that feature away. So this thing ended up in clearance bins. I got mine for like 50 bucks. And now these are incredibly expensive. And that's because people hacked it to actually be halfway decent. Just with a quick hack, you can enable support for so many more Vita games. There are going to be a couple Vita games that just don't work because of the use of a camera. And for those, I think there are some ways to get them to work on the PlayStation TV, but they're a lot more like, you know, it's not going to be a pretty fix. But hacking the PlayStation TV enables so much more support for so many games that Sony just always had 
on this list that they were like, nah, uh, uh, you can't play this on the Vita TV uh, for no reason other than like they were like, nah, uh, uh. You can disable the gross ass little filter on this thing. Again, the filter isn't that bad, but you know, still it's just kind of annoying. And thus fans have turned the PlayStation TV into an incredibly underwhelming little device, in my opinion into something that is actually pretty worthwhile. I just think the initial product Sony put out was incredibly half-baked. They were just squeezing the last couple drops of cash from the Vita uh, and just trying to make it work without actually really trying, you know? Because if they were actually trying, they would have really pushed to make sure this product is actually like, hey, like, damn, here's a reason to buy it. And it just never really felt like there was a reason to buy it. It felt like a half-baked, Vita that just was compatible with only half of the library didn't feel right on a TV like it just it was obviously just like hey th this is a touchscreen interface like if they actually wanted this product to succeed I feel like they should have actually went in and redesigned the OS a bit you know made sure more titles were compatible bundled in a DualShock 4 instead of a DualShock 3 and a DualShock 4 will work but the fact that they pretty much only bundled DualShock 3s in with PlayStation TVs pretty much made it so then it's just like okay well uh, yeah, touchscreen support, nah. And they just made the PlayStation TV more of a cheap, quick buck to make rather than an actual last hope to make the Vita successful. In my opinion, it's a fine way to play certain Vita games, but uh, it's getting a lot more pricey these days, so I don't really know if it's really worth it. At that point, I just get like a regular Vita because like a, a regular Vita is far more fun and enjoyable to use. Like that screen is great. It's fun to just hold that, you know, device and just feel such a premium handheld and just, you know, be like, wow, you know, like I'm playing these games in the palm of my hand. When you're playing Vita games on the TV, like they still look okay, but it's just like a lot of that magic kind of goes away a little bit. And if you want to capture footage off of one, uh, you might as well just hack the PlayStation Vita so then you can plug it into your PC and record off of it that way. This is an easier method to do it, but half of your games aren't gonna work without a hack. So either way, you're gonna have to hack some of this. Not fun. I've always been really disappointed by this thing. Uh, Sony, uh, are you hearing me? I I'm disappointed at what you did in 2013.